Good afternoon. I'm Professor John Jackson, the chairman of the college's 9-11 Memorial Committee, and it's my pleasure to serve as master of ceremonies for today's event. Please rise for the singing of the national anthem by the Newport Navy Choristers and remain standing for the invocation. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we won were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red glared of a pulsing air. It improved through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, save us as stars. Good morning. If you would like to join me in prayer, please feel free. Let us pray. Eternal God, we have come to pause and pray together in this place before you. May our hearts be as one in purpose and resolve as we commit to never forget the tragic events that came upon our nation these 20 years ago. We pray in memory both of all those who lost their lives as that tragic day unfolded but also for our brothers and sisters in arms lost in the years of war that followed. A prayer to honor those emergency workers whose selfless acts of bravery stand as an example to us all. We offer prayers of hope that joined together we might prevail over the evils of this world now and into the future. May our minds never fail us that we might ever possess a vivid memory of that day, a memory which guides us each and every step as we work to pursue peace. Lord, use us to speak words of healing to those families, spouses, children, and any whose lives were forever changed that fateful day. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Today marks the 20th anniversary of the cowardly attacks on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the aborted attack that ended in the grassy fields in Pennsylvania. Much has happened to the world since this fateful day, and it is highly appropriate that we pay our respects to those patriots and the others who have perished in this long fight. We are particularly pleased to have a battalion of midshipmen candidates from the Naval Academy Preparatory School, the vast majority of whom were not yet born on September 11th, and faculty and students from the Naval Supply Corps School joining the Naval War College family today. Looking back on September 12, 2001, we first learned that one of the Naval War College's fleet seminar students had died in the terrorist attack on the Pentagon. A committee was established that day to commemorate the sacrifice. In the days and weeks that followed, we learned of other students and of college alumni who also perished in this tragic event. As words of these losses circulated within the Naval War College family, donations of money, material, and services 
quickly began to be received by the Naval War College Foundation. A number of those donors are with us this afternoon, including the widow of Frank Hansen, whose company did much of the construction. Nice to see you again, Judy. The memorial you see before you, which was dedicated in September 2002, is the end result of their generosity. The focal point of this memorial is a broken fragment of limestone from the west of Saigon, which was carefully conveyed to Newport by a team of Navy CVs. This stone, though damaged, is standing upright, signifying the restored and strengthened Pentagon building and the continued strength of the United States Armed Forces and our allies. The final tally of the cowardly attack showed that three students who were actively involved in the fleet seminar program and eight, eight Naval War College alumni have been killed while on the job serving their country. Their names are inscribed on a bronze plaque and their memories, along with those of others killed that day, are enshrined in the hearts of all Americans. I now invite Rear Admiral Shoshana Chatfield, the 57th President of the Naval War College, to offer her thoughts on this solemn occasion. Thank you, John. September 11th, 2001. That is the day that we remember, and we honor those lost. We stand resolutely today with their families and their loved ones. This 20th anniversary is also a milestone that serves to educate and acknowledge the efforts of our military and remind the public that we have not forgotten our fall. And so with that, I would like to recognize the DeCanto family, who is here from Cape Cod, who has come to the Naval War College every year in memory of the late Navy Captain Gerald F. DeCanto. Jerry graduated in 1998 and was in the Pentagon during the attacks on 9-11. Joining us today is his mother, Ms. Pat DeCanto. His sisters, Ms. Marie DeCanto and Ms. Dale Choate and her husband, Mr. Tom Choate. Brothers, Mr. David DeCanto and Mr. Ray DeCanto and his spouse, Deb DeCanto. I would like to also recognize our Naval War College Foundation, who graciously assists us in providing the ceremonial wreath. To our Naval War College community, thank you all for putting on your uniforms today and for showing up in solidarity for our alumni. To our Navy Supply School, Thank you for sharing in this experience with us, our Navy Band Northeast, and our Naval Academy Preparatory School, class of 2022. To the families who are here today, the many friends, including our international military students and sponsor families, thank you for being here. In 2002, this memorial behind me was dedicated by my predecessor, Vice Admiral Rodney Rempt. And he asked those present to commit to keeping these patriots forever in their hearts and minds. As he did then, I ask you again to never forget. This afternoon, we gather under a clear blue sky, reminiscent of the morning of September 11, 2001. Each of us who survived that day remembers where we were and what we were doing when the attacks occurred. We each remember who we were with, what we felt like as we watched those horrific scenes unfolding, some in our workplaces, some at home in New York City or Washington, D.C. Some watching those sobering pictures and the commentary on television as the news reported that morning's events. 
two decades later, we are grateful that a next generation of young people have joined us today. You may have no direct memories to recall, but you have seen those visual images. And those are ingrained in your mind. The ash-covered faces of firefighters, police officers, innocent people. You know about what happened through stories that have been told. Our job, then and now, is to never let the memories or the lessons of that day fade into history. It is critical that we and our next generations learn about and understand the significance of what happened that day, who we lost, and how important it is to remember the date, 9-11. We are obligated and privileged to continue this memorial service it's been 20 years, but we will continue to honor those who have fallen, to salute those who bravely stood by our side, and to hold dear those who were left behind. Let us now take a moment to remember those who paid the ultimate price that day. Soldiers, <coughs> airmen, sailors, guardsmen, marines, members of the DOD interagency, many international friends, and so many civilians. Many who displayed courageous acts, heroism. They ran into the face of danger, and they knew that they faced certain death. Those brothers and sisters live on in our hearts and their sacrifice has inspired a nation of patriots to carry on the responsibility to preserve freedom against all odds and all enemies. We grieve your loss, but we'll forever be grateful and inspired by your fighting spirit. As a maritime nation, we responded to the attacks by deploying troops ships, aircraft overseas, and our allies and maritime partners around the world rallied to our side. The U.S. and international partners conducted joint operations against Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan beginning the period known as the Global War on Terrorism. As service members, we have a sovereign responsibility to protect those in our communities, our citizens. We uphold freedom and security, both domestically and around the world. Our international friends' selfless service assisted us in upholding that freedom. Our forces were so much stronger because we worked together. A lesson which is at the very foundation of our course material and our construct here at the Naval War College. It was through the efforts of many that peace and security was restored, but we cannot count our achievements without also acknowledging the costs. The lives of many American and many partner and ally nations were lost in the fight protecting all of our country's citizens from terrorism. For 20 years, their dedicated, and their dedicated efforts and sacrifice and the support of their families has allowed us to protect our homelands from attack. The sacrifice of those in the profession of arms was not made in vain and it will not ever be forgotten. It has been two decades since the attacks, but I know that the void left by those we lost is still felt. There are some things that time can never repair. 2,977 families have been grieving 
and healing since that day. More than 6,000 more, those survivors and their families from physical wounds and trying to move on from mental wounds. Here at the Naval War College, we lost 11 colleagues and friends. And each family's journey is very reflective of what it's like to be left behind when someone you love is taken. The cut eventually heals, but the scar always remains. The pain and suffering you have endured and are still enduring is not overlooked just because time has passed. I stand before you today to tell you we see you. Not just here at the Naval War College, but across the nation, we acknowledge your pain and we lift you up today and always and share the burden that you will always carry. This attack on 9-11 was directed not just at the American people, but by targeting our iconic World Trade Center and the Pentagon. The terrorists were also symbolically striking at the heart of our nation's guiding ideals of freedom, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In the years that followed, we have devoted numerous efforts to improving and unifying our naval service, projecting strength overseas, and practicing our craft while protecting our shores at home. <coughs> at the Naval War College, we have kept 9-11 at the forefront of our education as we tirelessly push to acquire the mental strength and flexibility to outthink our competitors, our adversaries, and to ensure that we are equal to the challenges that await us. In honoring all of the fallen, the Navy built ships to recognize these sacrifices. Three ships of the San Antonio class, USS New York, USS Arlington, and USS Somerset are named in honor of the victims of the attacks on the World Trade Center, Pentagon, and United Flight 93. <coughs> USS New York LPD-21 honors the 2,752 victims who lost their lives when United Airlines Flight 175 and United uh, and American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the World Trade Center in New York City. The bow and the stern of the ship was forged from steel from the World Trade Center. And that ship was commissioned in New York City in November of 2009. USS Arlington, LPD-24, honors the 184 victims, including 47 Navy sailors, civilians, and retirees who lost their lives when American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. The ship proudly displays steel recovered from the Pentagon, and it was commissioned in April of 2013. <coughs> USS Somerset LPD-25 honors 40 passengers and the crew of United Airlines Flight 93 who prevented the four terrorist hijackers from reaching their destination and instead forced the airplane to crash in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. The bow and bow stem of the USS Somerset includes 22 tons of steel from a dragline crane used for coal mining in Pennsylvania site where United Flight 93 crashed. And the ship was commissioned in March of 2014. And so we will never forget September 11th, 2001. We will never forget the debt carried by our fellow war college comrades who all gave their lives for our freedom. Our compassion for their families will never fade. And we must continue to honor the memory of our lost ones with ceremonies like these. Our courage to carry on will never waver. On this 20th day of remembrance, may God bless those who were lost, their families, 
and our great nation. Thank you, Admiral. Much of the 11 shipmates that fell that day, we will hear from an officer who was in the Pentagon on that horrible morning and reflect on what that day meant to him and all Americans and our allies. Captain Mark Turner retired from active duty following a distinguished 30-year career as a naval aviator and now serves with the college's international programs office. Please welcome Captain Mark Turner. stand before all of you at this great institution of learning for this special ceremony. It's truly a distinct privilege. Admiral Chatfield, John Jackson, the Canto family, CNO fellows, words cannot express my gratitude for this opportunity. I consider it one of the great honors of my life. For those who lost loved ones on September 11th here, memories are a curious thing. It's interesting how an event that seems so long ago to so many feels like just yesterday to us. We recall the beauty of the blue sky that day, then the confusion, the fear, and the pain of immeasurable loss. Please know you're not alone. Certainly my words or the memorials across this country cannot fill that void. What I hope for you today is to reclaim some purpose from what was and always will be a senseless act of violence and to remind us of the triumph born from such a devastating tragedy. For those who lived through the attacks that day, there's a fear our experiences and lessons will fade away, weakened by time. My lesson began when American Flight 77 with innocent passengers on board struck the Pentagon two stories beneath my office. I witnessed firsthand human devastation, the worst mankind had to offer. Yet, a short time later, the greatness of this nation began to rise. Out of the ashes, this nation's triumph over evil began. I watched firefighters feverishly fighting the spreading fire, triage and helicopters medevacking the wounded. I experienced firsthand service members rushing into the flames to save their comrades their fellow Americans. I remember the old guard from Arlington National Cemetery relieving us. We had been at the face of the flame for hours. Their statement, we will take it from here, has never left me. Since then, like many of you here, sometimes I need to find footing. I decided to rely on what became pillars of my life the heroes around me, and the enduring American character and spirit of this great nation. 20 years ago, when towers came crashing down, the Pentagon was attacked, and a plane hallowed a field in Pennsylvania, heroes rose. While September 11th is about so many things, my message today is about the three sets of heroes born that day, and the challenge before us. To the first set of heroes, all those we lost 20 years ago and in the wars that followed, both American and allies, whose passing came too soon. Their lives no longer measured in years, but in purpose. I am confident they are looking down from heaven today, humble to see all of us gathered to honor them. Each one now woven into the fabric of America and their nation, a bond that transcends time and distance, 
They are forever a part of the flags raised by firemen out of the rubble of the World Trade Center, flown on the side of the Pentagon, and they stand eternally vigilant high above every pillar of government across our great land. They hold a special place of honor in the flags draped on the caskets of those Americans and international allies who gave their last full measure of devotion defending freedom. No one has a greater love than this, that a person will lay down their life for friends. They were our friends. They were our family. And they remain with us. For those lost, we say loud and clear to the heavens, we miss you. And we will never forget what your loss means to us as individuals and to our country. We will never, ever forget. To our second group of heroes, those forever mourning their loss. You did not get to say goodbye to your loved ones who never returned home. Please know your life was not just one of accidental fate, much to the contrary. You represent a steadfast purpose few will ever know. You have the blessing and the burden of keeping their memories alive. What our adversaries failed to grasp, what they could never come close to grasping is what this nation means. The concepts of liberty, opportunity, strength, and diversity, a nation that remains the great marketplace of ideas. And what you, the surviving families, so elegantly reflect every day. No, that is something those who choose terror can never touch. Thank you. Thank you for showing all of us the definition of grace and dignity. Your example has forever strengthened the mosaic of our American fabric. The final heroes, the fabric not mentioned yet, is embedded in every military uniform of those who served post 9-11. In America, we all bore witness to more than three million service members rise to the challenge of their generation deploying around the world with our allies in defense of ter against terror. It was the first time our nation ever fought a war, an extended war, with an all-volunteer force. To most of us, they remain anonymous, known only for their blessing of freedom they provided. Their heroism is not nor can it ever be measured in 15 minutes of fame. Because when you don your uniform, you do so not for glory or recognition, rather for the most noble of causes. You do it for each other, for your family, and for your country. Nations around the world chose to honor September 11th with their blood, their sweat, and their tears. They quietly bear the scars of war, both seen and unseen. They are and shall forever be interlaced with the fabric that blankets our nation. I know we have many from the Naval Academy prep and supply schools here in attendance. The torch of freedom will soon be passed to you Ensure the sacred grounds in New York, Arlington, and Shanksville remain not just a place of contemplation, but a living testament of America's strength and resilience. When you enter the crucible of your American journey, you will have with you all the heroes I just mentioned. You will honor those lost with your future successes. You are and will forever be a triumph of their tragedy. And now the challenge. While we will never forget that day, 
honor the triumph of this moment. Through sacrifices of so many, Captain Gerald DeCanto, the names who honor this memorial, their surviving families, and those who chose a life of service, they have enabled us to achieve a better tomorrow. We can give no greater gift by our own actions to be worthy of their legacy. To borrow the wisdom of that anonymous hero outside the smoldering Pentagon, we will take it from here. Though daunting, that is our challenge. Strive tirelessly to live lives of gratitude, lives worthy of gratitude. In doing so, we will take our place in this moment. If it is questioned whether the fabric of this nation is strong enough to carry us in our most dire moments, whether we can rely on the ethos that binds us, you need to look no further than one of the final acts of passengers on United Flight 93. Through frantic cell phone calls, the passengers understood the plane had become a weapon of destruction. Working together, they formed a resistance. What did the passengers choose to do in their moment of peril? What foundation did they lean on to determine their next action? They decided to fall back on the American tradition that was part of them. They voted. They voted and agreed to fight back, willing to sacrifice their lives to save those on the ground, united as Americans. Let us today renew our commitment to each other and have faith in our ethos. Let us all believe we will take it from here and honor all those who are no longer with us. May those who passed forever rest in God's grace. Continue to bless the DeCanto family and all who lost loved ones that day and since. And may God forever bless America and her allied nations who lead with freedom and defend democracy every day. And tomorrow, of all days, let us rely on the strength, strength that is the fabric of this great nation. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you, Mark. That was absolutely excellent. So, now I'd like to take a, a few minutes to tell you about each of the Patriots we salute today. Captain Gerald F. DeCanto was a 1998 graduate of the College of Naval. Following his commissioning from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1979, he served in a wide array of engineering and operations assignments on surface combatants, culminating in command of the guided missile frigate USS Simpson. He was serving as director of the current operations and plans branch in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. As Admiral Chatfield has noted, we're honored to have the DeCanto family with us today to accept the collective thanks for his service and sacrifice. Pat, your beautiful family clearly demonstrates the love and reverence that military families feel for those who fall in service to our nation. We remember Captain Gerald F. DeCanto. Lieutenant Commander Robert R. Elseth completed his war college studies through the Fleet Seminar Program here in Newport, Rhode Island in June of 1995. During his studies, he was selected as the Junior Officer of the Year for the Newport Ashore Commands in 1994. A graduate of Ohio State University, he served on surface combatants 
in engineering and weapons positions for a decade before transferring to the Naval Reserve. He was a reservist serving on active duty in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. We remember Lieutenant Commander Robert R. Elseth. <laughs> Captain Lawrence D. Getzfred completed his Naval War College studies in 1990. He enlisted in the Navy in 1963, completed Aviation Officer Candidate School in 1972, and then served as a Naval Flight Officer in the patrol aviation community. He served in a number of leadership positions, including command of Patrol Squadron 40. He was in the Navy Command Center when it was attacked. We remember Captain Lawrence D. Getzfred. <laughs> Ms. Angela Marie Houts had just begun her war college studies at the Fleet Seminar site in the Pentagon. She was a civilian employee of the Department of the Navy and had been recently promoted to Senior Day Analyst and the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence Plot, the youngest person, military or civilian, to ever hold that post. She celebrated her 27th birthday on September 6th aboard a Navy frigate during an orientation cruise and perished in the Naval Command Center. We remember Ms. Angela Marie Howes. <coughs> Lieutenant Commander Patrick Jude Murphy completed his studies at the college's fleet seminar site in Great Lakes, Illinois in 1999. Following his commissioning from the NROTC program at the University of Mississippi, he attended Navy Nuclear Power School, graduating in 1986. He subsequently served aboard both attack and fleet ballistic missile submarines. He was serving a three-week active duty assignment in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. We remember Lieutenant Commander Patrick Jude Murphy. <coughs> Lieutenant Jonas Martin Panic is studying national security decision making at the college's fleet seminar site in Annapolis, Maryland. As a student at the Naval Academy, he excelled as a football player and a power lifter. After graduating in 1997, he completed the Naval Intelligence Officer's basic course. He was assigned as a flag intelligence briefer within the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence plot and was on duty in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. We remember Lieutenant Jonas Martin Panic. Captain Jack D. Punches, U.S. Navy retired, graduated from the College of Naval Command and Staff in 1985. A Naval aviator for 27 years, he retired from active duty in 2000 and was serving in a senior civilian position as deputy head of the Navy Interagency Support Branch at the time of the attack. We remember Captain Jack D. Punches. Commander Robert A. Schlegel completed his studies at the college's fleet seminar site in Norfolk, Virginia. As a surface warfare officer, he had service aboard cruisers and destroyers, including a tour as executive officer of the destroyer USS Arthur W. Radford. He was serving as the deputy current operations and plans branch head at the time of the attack. We remember Commander Robert A. Schlegel. Commander Dan Frederick Schanauer was a fleet seminar student and a naval intelligence officer, having served in a number of assignments, both afloat and overseas. In May of 1997, his article, Freedom is Not Free, was published in the U.S. Naval Institute. In it, he recalled the death of four shipmates a decade earlier aboard USS Midway. An excerpt from this article has been incorporated into the memorial. He was serving as officer in charge of the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence Plot at the time of the attack. We remember Commander Dan Frederick Shanow. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Kip Taylor graduated from the College of Naval Command and Staff in 1988, 1998. The son of a career Army officer, he was a member of the Army Adjutant General Corps with extensive experience in administrative and personnel matters. On 11 September 2001, he was serving as military assistant to the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Army for personnel, Lieutenant General Timothy Maud, who was the senior officer to die in the attack. Kip was posthumously promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Kip's wife, Nancy, gave birth to a second son months after the attack, and then she passed away from cancer 
the following year. Kip's brother is raising the boys. We remember Lieutenant Colonel Kip Taylor. <laughs> Captain John D. M. Nicky, Sr., USN retired, was a graduate of the Naval War College class of 1967, and he was aboard American Airlines Flight 77 when it destroyed the west facade of the Pentagon. At age 71, Captain Yamniki was the oldest person to die during the Pentagon attack. A member of the U.S. Naval Academy class of 1952, he served with distinction as a Navy fighter pilot and test pilot, ultimately serving as director of the Navy Test Pilot School in Maryland. He is survived by his wife and four children. We remember Captain John D. Yamniki Sr. In 2002, the Naval War College awarded honorary master's degrees in, to each of these alumni. At this time, Rear Admiral Chatfield and Captain Turner will be assisted by the Naval War College Color Guard in placing a commemorative wreath in honor of our fallen comrades. Please rise for the placement of the wreath. Lord, even as this ceremony concludes now, may you grant us assurance that the memory of this day would never conclude. We have sought to honor the memory of those lost and the hurting who remain. May your spirit comfort them and fill their hearts like only you can do. Father, bless each who stand here before you now in defense of our nation. Be our guide and our protector now as we leave this place. We pray in your matchless name. Amen.
this concludes our ceremony. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. And thank you to the Newport Navy Choristers for their beautiful voices. And finally, thank you for honoring the memory of these great Americans.